Welcome back, everybody, to Passion Poultry Talk. This is episode number 46, and I'm your host, Mike Badger. Today, I'm going to bring Jim Adkins of the Sustainable Poultry Network back onto the podcast and talk to him for a little bit about an upcoming trip that we're going to do together to Cameroon. But we'll get into that here in just a moment. I first want to give you a, just a quick update. We're one episode closer to launching our new podcast format. Um, we're going to primarily go to a, a an interview and profile series, so uh, stay tuned for that. I'm going to kick that off with a, with um, my interview coming up in the next episode. And I really want to encourage you, if you want to be, you know, after you hear a couple of these episodes, if you want to be on the podcast, reach out to me. Um, we'll make options available on pasturedpoultrytalk.com. Or if you know a producer that you think is doing great things, has has established him or herself, and is really kind of um, has some stuff figured out, not necessarily everything, but you know, is going in the right direction, uh, is a model of, of what we should be looking for, and has some, some insights to share. I want to know that person's name. You know, feel free to, to, to share that with me. Again, go to passionpoultrytalk.com and we'll put a form up there so you can uh, send me those those leads and we'll, we'll do what we can to get them on the podcast. No, no promises. I'm going to filter. I'm going to be selective about who we bring on. I want to bring on the very best producers, uh, regardless of of uh, where they're at and and kind of the scale. So we're we're not necessarily looking for big. We're not looking for small. We're looking for good, great, and awesome. And I think we're going to be enlightened, educated, and dare I say, surprised by the perspectives that we find on pasture poultry farms across the United States and beyond, regardless of the scale. You know, my my goal here is to to give you a cross section of our community that you don't see publicly displayed and, and definitely not in this, this kind of spotlight. And I really want to accentuate what we're all about. I think there's a lot of misconception right now in, in, in uh, about what passion poultry is, even from some of our own practitioners. And we won't go into this rant. I'll save it for a special episode at some point, but there's really a, a whole lot of negative operators happening you know, in, in pasture poultry. And part of that is, you know, I tried it and failed. So you will too. And I have a small view of life and you will too. And that's, like I said, we won't go into that full rant here, but I want to counter that. And I want to counter what's happening in pasture poultry right now. It's not 1997 anymore, which is when APA was formed. My point is in that hearkening back to the early nineties, when pasture poultry really started to lift off the ground with Joel Salatin is there's been a lot happening since then. You know, that our community is is pushing a quarter of a century in in pastured poultry, but there's still a lot of a lot of dissent. There's a lot of negative perspective shining on us from the broader poultry industry, whatever you want to call that complex. You know, the the integrated CAFO type of folks. But there's also a lot of negative energy shining out from from the bottom of our ranks, and and I feel inclined to do something to to just counteract that message. In a very positive way and you know positive doesn't mean everything's right positive never means there's no problems but you know that's just a, a function of life what i what i really really get stuck in my crawl is listening to people who are blinded by their own experiences and can't see beyond them to to understand what's happening in in the broader context of pasture poultry and that's maybe that's a unique position that i'm in that i get to interact with hundreds and thousands of producers year in, year out. We're going to ask some questions designed to showcase our community um, and help it at the same time. So it's a lofty goal. Time will tell if we if we uh, hit it. I'm going to kick off that interview series. That the, the first interview in that new format will be the next episode. It will be me kind of kicking it off. I can already tell you we have some upcoming guests. Uh, Grady's going to be back on to join us, and, and we're going to run him through the process. I've already talked to Patrick McNiff um, about – who's a Rhode Island producer doing great things. And we're going to, we're going to chat with him and he's going to share his, what he's got going on and, and how he got there and stay tuned. That's all I can say is just stay tuned. As we take this podcast and head out into the future, one thing I do want to make sure that's clear. This is a, a Michael Badger production. You know, Mike is producing this podcast. People confuse it with APA, but it's not an APA thing. We're intertwined through me to the same dude, you know, Mike, anchors both of those positions kind of sometimes. But as you as you see stuff happen here in Pasture Poultry Talk and just realize that it's Mike pulling those strings and it's got this is 
got to be a, a way to be successful, be sustainable, and and be something that gets done every week. And that's the goal going forward. And we're going to do that with some great content first, and then we're going to look for some some later goals um, that will will come down the line. So without much more yakking for me, I want to segue in here to our, our our guest Jim. You know, one of the things that's shaping up for me this winter is a very busy travel season. Got a bunch of stuff happening here in the early fall, but then. And we talked about that last episode, you know, the, yeah, the Apple Roadshow, which is going to kick off here very, very within a couple of days of my recording this. And then we have a, a large scale pasture poultry producer conference in Asheville that Grady Field and I will be a part of. Jeff Maddox will be there um, as part of the SPN uh, National Conference. So that'll be a fun event. And then that gets us into like early November. At the end of the month, beginning of December, I'm leaving the country, going to Cameroon with Jim. And, and that's the reason I wanted to bring him on to the podcast today is so he could share what that trip is and what we're going to be doing in, in Cameroon. It's really a Christian ministry trip that's going to be providing sustainable poultry training to the indigenous farmers. I'll just kind of let it, let it hang there and we'll get the details from Jim. All right. So I'm honored to have my friend Jim Atkins with me on the podcast today. Jim, as you probably have heard in earlier episodes, we talked a little bit about heritage poultry and some breeding topics. But uh, today, Jim, who's a, the founder of the Sustainable Poultry Network and, and an organization called Global Poultry Initiative, is going to co- talk to us about um, some very cool opportunities coming up with, with Global Poultry Institute this this winter. And I guess really in a, on an ongoing basis with some ministry work in Cameroon. So I'm going to just leave it there, bring Jim on now and let him introduce himself and and talk about what he's doing and let, you know introduce GPI to us. Uh, so welcome, Jim. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Mike. It's um, it is great to be back on your podcast, and um, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, about a year, a little a little more than a year, I believe. It's yeah, hard, hard I to believe that when we were. Uh, <laughs> I just happened to be. Uh, passing through PA and you and I met at some library or something, some place you told me to meet you. And I thought I was showing up at uh, kind of a hippie hangout, like somewhere in Asheville, North Carolina. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Downtown Harrisburg. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, it's, um, <clears throat> it's great to be back on. And um, I'm so thankful for the work that you do, Mike thankful for the partnership that we share and and thank you for your friendship thank you for all that you do for pastured poultry and i especially love that you're breeding a heritage turkey called a beltsville small white but we'll save that conversation for another time huh? <laughs> yeah definitely basically jim i mean you know it but for the interest of our guests here we're i i am planning a trip um with you to cameroon in in early December. And, uh, I just wanted a, an opportunity to, to share that trip with our listeners here so you could introduce it. Um, you know, spread the good news, so to speak. And I guess I just want to start out with, with, um, you know, what is this work that you're doing? Who, who is the global poultry Inter- Institute and, and what's that organization do, um, currently? Okay. Great. Great. Well, as you may recall, Mike, we um, we founded the Sustainable Poultry Network uh, in December of 2010, and um, so we just, you know, that took off like gangbusters. Just people who wanting to learn how to to breed their own chickens and and be sustainable through a breeding program, and uh, so it took off, and it was it was just growing like crazy. Well, along the way, I would say about two and a half years ago, maybe three, um, we got an invitation. I got an invitation to go to Kenya to be able to train some farmers in sustainable poultry production. And uh, so, um, of course, I replied to the email and said, thank you, but I've never been to Africa, and I don't think I'm your guy to train farmers (laughs) in Africa. So, of course, they emailed back and said, yes, you are our guy. And I said, email back and say, no, I'm not your guy, and here's why. And so I kept kind of raising the bar, and eventually the Lord said, Jim, you are the guy. <laughs> so we went we went to um, went to Kenya that year. I can't remember exactly when that was, but a- after that, just 
I mean, God just really broke my heart for Africa. And so we went to Kenya, then we ended up in Ethiopia, and and in the last couple of years, we've launched into several countries to be able to train farmers and do do with farmers in international places that we're doing with farmers here in the United States of the idea of of training, coaching, and mentoring. And so, um, so as you can imagine, um, this as this thing was taking off, it was a little bit overwhelming to me. We were in Kenya, and then we went to Ethiopia, and I spent some time in Togo, and we've been in Costa Rica, and uh, some countries that are opening up as we move ahead are. Of course, I went to Can- you know, and then Cameroon, and um, we're looking at Liberia, Nigeria, South Sudan, which is a really rough place right now, so yeah. we probably won't be going there anytime soon. But but basically, the idea is, Mike, coming back to your question of what do we do, our goal is to equip indigenous farmers. What I mean by indigenous is the people who live in that country. So we're not trying to go in and and do it for them, but actually equip them and educate them and empower them to be sustainable with poultry production. And uh, so that's basically, you know, out of that desire to do that is what birthed the Global Poultry Initiative. And, you know, obviously it's just kind of, it's it's totally separate from, from the Sustainable Poultry Network, but simply put, GPI wants to establish a sustainable poultry network in every country that we are invited to come to. And so that's kind of an overview overview of what we do. Okay. And then, so when you say that you're, you're equipping and educating and empowering uh, the farmers for a sustainable poultry network, what is, or a sustainable poultry farm, what does that look like? Can you give me, I guess, can you give me an idea of, are we talking um, establishing, you know, Hundreds of birds, thousands of birds. What's the what's that business look like when you first start it up? Well, the first thing we do, that's a great question, Mike. And the first thing we do when we go, when we are invited to go to another country, um, I always preface, and I want to make sure people know, that we don't go somewhere unless we're invited. And we're invited by indigenous folks. So the idea is, you know, the reason we're going to Cameroon, the reason you're going with us to Cameroon, is because we were invited. But step one is we get the invitation. Step two is what we call, <clears throat> well, that invitation. Then people have to, um, they got to fill out an application. They say, you know, and basically the application is, why do you want to have a partnership with the, the Global Poultry Initiative? Once they fill out that application, <clears throat> we accept it. And there's a team of guys that accept, we look at those applications. Once we accept those, then we schedule a, a survey trip. There's four things, Mike, we look at when we do the survey trip. We evaluate the chickens that are on the ground in that country. So when, when I did the survey trip to Cameroon, we evaluate the chickens. We evaluate the grains that they have available. We evaluate the climate because we say, hey, if we're going to get you a develop you a good chicken or bring in genetics. We got to know what climate we're dealing with to know if that, you know, what it would take for a chicken to really live and, and thrive in that particular community or in that country. Right. And then the fourth thing that we evaluate is the people is, do we have farmers there who can carry on and help build, build the business? So, um, once that survey trip takes place, um, at the end of that trip in the same you know, within the same week or 10 days, at the end of that trip, we gather a team of indigenous people together and, and basically, and this is, I'm giving you the overview. There's a process yep. of how we go about, but basically we develop a national service team. And that national service team is a group of people in that country who are going to carry out the training that we provide, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna equip them. We're gonna mobilize them. We're gonna empower them. And so the really cool thing about Cameroon is, and I there's no way that we can go into this whole story, but but God miraculously brought me together. Melissa and I were in Kenya, and we met uh, 
a guy by the name of Georges, who's a native from Cameroon. He just happened to be in Kenya. He loves chickens. He loves Jesus. And he wanted to use poultry as a way to be able to pr- help train farmers in Cameroon to be able to be sustainable, to feed themselves, to feed their family, to feed their neighbors, and even to have a little bit of an income, you know, and, and uh, start a, a small farming business. So after that survey trip takes place, the next trip, we schedule a Institute of Sustainable Poultry. It's called ISP, and that is our, our just our our five-day poultry school that is, is all uh, written and formed to help those particular folks in that international country. But what we do there, Mike, we cover five things. And I think I may have talked to you about these in our last podcast or when people want to attend one of our slow poultry seminars. We cover breeding, growing, feeds and feeding, processing, and marketing and education. Those are the five pillars that we cover in that Institute of Sustainable Poultry when we, you know, when we go to the country a second time. And so those are the things that we train and, and apply that into that particular country where we're serving. Does that make sense? It does. It does. And so basically this trip coming up then to Cameroon is in that second step. So that's exactly right. That's, that's exactly right. And the idea is, and I'm so blessed and very encouraged that you're going to be joining us and being one of our instructors. The idea is, is I could teach all five of those days myself, but that's a lot. And (laughs) not only is a lot, but, but there's areas of expertise that I'm not very good at that other instructors will be good at. So for Cameroon, Lord willing, it'll be myself and you and Brant Bullock, who's, you know, uh, one of our coaches in the Sustainable Poultry Network. And um, so, um, so yeah, so we're in step two. We're doing the five-day poultry, you know, the five-day Institute of Sustainable Poultry. And that's um, that takes place in early December, as you said. <clears throat> Okay, and and you know, just for the record, Jim, you know, I I tried to turn this trip down um, a couple times as well. I, I, I you know, I, I got your original invitation to to come to training so that it could be I could be on the the you know on deck circle for a trip at some point. Um, and I I remember telling Christy, I'm like, well, that's really a bad time. <laughs> I'm a I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> And, you know, I didn't really respond to you at the, at the time. And I was asking you a couple questions, I think. And then it went on and on. And then, uh, one day I got a call from somebody who was all, was, who was planning on going on the trip. And he said, Hey, this is a really weird thing, but I can't do that trip, but I'm going to recommend you. So I'm calling you to let you know that. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think I was planning on doing any of that, but, um, <laughs> Um, so, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we try to exercise our free will, but it just gets squashed. As you say, uh, we're, we're called to do some, some various and some specific things. And, um, I think the message is, is pretty clear, uh, that I have received from, from God as well as it said, you're going to Cameroon. So don't know what that's going to look like yet, but we're, we're on that path. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I tell you, um, that's cool. That's very, very cool. And and quite frankly, I was I knew you made it pretty clear. Hey, I want to uh, go through some of the advanced training with SPN and GPI, and I I really want to someday. I want to go to maybe Africa or to another country, and and I knew that. So, but then when this particular individual that you're referring to says I can't go, and Mike Badger is my first choice to fill my shoes, and I'm like. Okay, are you supposed to tell him that, or am I supposed to tell him that? He said, "No, I'll pass it on to him." So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Interesting, so, anyway, interesting stuff. that's great. <laughs> um, that's a, that's a cool story. And you know, sometimes you you get a good reference, and you just got to take it, right? So, um, you know, it, it's really it really is an honor to to be sitting in this in this role, having the opportunity to to travel abroad and and you know provide some training on just poultry, you know, sustainable poultry, poultry, whatever, just getting out there and spreading, um, good information about raising, breeding, eating poultry, you know, all of it. So, 
Um, I want to talk a little bit, Jim, if we could, you know, we talked, you know, a little bit about the process here about what it is, but I'm wondering how the, the ministry portion of this plays into the, the, the Institute of Sustainable Poultry. Cause this, this is, as far as I understand, a ministry, um, a mission trip, so to speak. Um, so how do, can you, can you explain a little bit about that time? And, and cause we'll be there for what we'll be there for a little over two weeks and we got five days of training. So um, <clears throat> can you talk to that a little bit? Absolutely. So just kind of walk through what, what the trip looks like. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, anytime Mike, and you're going to soon find out, I'm kind of excited that I get to be your chaperone and introduce you to this, but you know, we'll, we will fly out on a, on a Tuesday night, um, go through, I can't remember where our itinerary is, but we go through Europe and we'll end up in Duella. Camer, we'll leave on Tuesday, the 29th of November. We'll arrive in the evening on Wednesday. So right there is two days. Thursday, we'll arrive Wednesday night. Thursday, we'll rest. That's kind of the recovery day, get settled into where we're staying. Um, and then on Friday and Saturday, uh, we'll meet with that national service team that I was telling you about. So we will plant, and there's, there's uh, I can't remember, there's seven or eight folks who are on that national service team. And we will meet with that service team for, we will do prayer, prayer, Bible study, training. Um, we'll do some strategic planning uh, about what happens after the uh, Institute of Sustainable Poultry, after the training event. Um, we're constantly working with this local indigenous team from the country. And uh, so that's what we'll do on Friday and Saturday. That's really pouring in and equipping that local team. And it's kind of like the idea of Jesus investing in the 12 disciples. You know, I'm sure a lot of the listeners would know about the life of Christ and those disciples that were hanging out with Jesus. But And so we're really, Jesus invested in the 12. And we're going to invest in that local group, you know, on Friday and Saturday. Sunday will be a, a church day. Um, I will, uh, I'll preach in a local church, and that'll be a day of worship for us to enjoy uh, being with the folks from Cameroon. And then the, the Institute of Sustainable Poultry, the training starts on Monday the 5th and goes through Friday the, the 9th. And then uh, Saturday, you know, we'll all be ready for a rest day. So the 10th, that Saturday is a rest day. The 11th, we'll be in a different church. We'll probably travel somewhere. And everywhere we go, Mike, um, even us as a small group, you and Brant and I and, and whoever else is with us, they'll want us to share in churches. They always want to, you know, give a report. And so we'll do that on that, on that uh, Sunday. And then um, on Monday, we'll actually do some church ministry training so okay. some of the national service some of the national service team but also there are some young pastors and some people who are excited about following christ and on monday we'll do some training and then tuesday we'll just debrief and we'll make our way to the airport i can't remember we either fly out tuesday night or wednesday night but um so that's kind of the overview of what we will be doing when we're there in cameroon yeah it sounds uh Sounds busy <laughs> and fun. So, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it, it will be fun, and, and it'll it will uh, it'll rock your world in a really really good way. And um, so, um, but the key is we love the chickens, and we're gonna we want to use the poultry as a way to help train them in sustainable you know farming practices. But we also want to make sure that we really invest in the people that are there, so that there's a lasting impact of sustainability so great um well, that makes that makes that makes sense yes yes it does yes it does um so we're, we're just kind of at the point here where i wanted to keep this relatively um a compact segment and i think we've got most of everything right. in that we need um i know one of the issues that we have one of the one of the challenges going into um a trip like this is, you know, getting there and funding it. And so I want I want you to kind of wrap up, Jim, if you would just talk about what's, if, if somebody has a, 
is just hearing a call to support this project. They really love it. They really think it's a good idea. They want to be involved. How does that happen? And, you know, is there anything else that you, you think that we need to know about, you know, the, the, the ministry side of this, the, the trip, the, the effort in, in Cameroon or just, you know, any missing pieces, I guess. That's great. That's great. Well, I'll, uh, I'll mention two things and I'll make that, uh, kind of as, as brief as possible and kind of uh, bring this to a conclusion. Obviously, Mike, the, the first of the two points that I want to mention here as we wrap up is obviously there is the expense of getting <coughs> you, Mike Badger, me, Jim Adkins, and the instructors getting us over to uh, Cameroon. And uh, I do not have um, I do not have that budget right Candy, we you uh, I had sent you the let me see if I can find it really really quickly but I can talk while I'm looking but so obviously those of you know all of our listeners if there's folks who are interested in wanting to support helping to get Mike Badger or to help to get us as the instructors over to Cameroon I'm, you know there's there's airfares there's the housing there's our meals and our policy is this. Mike Badger is already, you know, he's giving up almost 14 days to go to Cameroon to serve, to teach, to bless people, to equip people. And, you know, you're not getting paid for that. You're you're going out of a sense of call and a sense of a privilege to be able to go and serve and invest in the people of Cameroon. But our goal is that it wouldn't, you know, you're not getting paid anything except for a bunch of blessings. But we also, our goal is to, for you not to have to pay pay out of your pocket. And I know you're willing to, and you've expressed that a number of times, but um, but our goal is to let people know <clears throat> if you want to give to help support, to get uh, myself or the team of instructors to get over to Cameroon, um, you can actually go online. Um, you can contact Mike directly, but, but uh, you can go online to globalpoultry.org. And you will see when you go to the website a place where you uh, can give online, and that's that's usually what people want, you know, want to do the most is just easy and it's efficient and it's quick and so forth. The other piece is we are implementing, <coughs> and we're doing it in Cameroon for the first time, is a a uh, sponsor a farmer program. And so I'll just tell you for that sustainable. Institute of Sustainable Poultry for five days of training for housing and meals in Africa for a Cameroon or in Cameroon, I should say, the cost for one farmer to attend the Institute is about 200 U.S. dollars. Well, for a Cameroon farmer, 200 U.S. dollars is incredible. I mean, that is an enormous amount of money. The average Cameroon farmer or person in Cameroon makes a, between a dollar and two dollars a, a day US dollars in Cameroon so so two hundred dollars is a lot so what we're doing is we know the value of of paying something and so what we're doing is we're uh, each farmer has to go through the application they have to actually apply to come to this uh, institute this training event and they have to be able to pay a hundred US dollars and so um, a good friend of mine had this idea. He's like, "Hey, let's let's do a a sponsor a farmer program where we farmers here in the U.S. can sponsor one of those farmers in Cameroon by paying one hundred dollars, and and then the Cameroon farmer has to pay a hundred dollars." Now, as I said, that's uh, not as big of a sacrifice on our end as it is for them. It's an enormous amount of savings and hard work of days and days and days and days and days and months sometimes for them to be able to pay that $100. Right. So we're putting together, it's, it's not online yet, but we are putting together this um, uh, sponsor, a farmer program, and, and uh, I hope that a lot of our listeners would take advantage of that. We'll send, who, as you sponsor a farmer, you'll get a picture of that farmer, you'll get a little brief description of who that farmer is, and you can be praying for them, and, and you would be helping a farmer in Cameroon to be able to get to the training that we're going to be providing. So does that make sense? It does make sense. Yes. And, and, um, 
you know, uh, working 100 days or 200 days to afford to attend uh, what could be really a life changing training for them. And and uh, I'll, I'll just I'll just I'll go long here, Jim, because I, I can't help it because something just popped into my head and it's a recent conversation and it applies directly to what you're talking about here. Um, I was talking to the pastor at my my church here recently about this trip and he was pretty excited about it. Uh, he, he is all on board with with um, with ministering, disciple making and, you know, going out into the the uh, mission field. And right. he shared with me a story of, of a Jamaican mission that they did recently where somebody was there and set up this woman farmer with a, a breeding flock of birds that then turned around and generated an income for that that family with through eggs and meat. And then when the mission from our church went back to, you know, Jamaica a couple weeks later, or I'm sorry, a, a year or two later, they were then able to purchase the meat and eggs and use it for their meals when they were there. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a big investment, I, th- I think is what you made clear, but the payoff, you know, is, is a transformational, um, opportunity for for the people who are attending this uh training and giving that support to them i think is is uh is a strong calling yeah that's that's exactly right and and that's very exciting and i will tell you mike and i know we're going long here i guess it's just a subject that jim and mike are excited about but (laughs) um our whole thing is you know many mission trips we go over it and we give the Africans or the Cameroonians or the Kenyans or Ethiopia or Liberia, we give them something, but we don't. It's kind of like if you've heard that term, we give them fish, but we never teach them how to fish. Right. And so what happens is when you give them fish, when the fish are gone, they're hungry again, but we're going to teach them how to fish. Now, we're talking about chickens, but um, instead of just eating a chicken or, or you know having a couple eggs, we're going to teach them how to actually breed and develop you know, poultry that will sustain them. And so I'm really glad your pastor is excited. And, and um, you know, uh, it all comes back to this was um, this was ordained of God that Mike Badger is, bu- is supposed to be a part of this Cameroon trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, there's so, just, just some folks you don't argue with or you shouldn't. That's anyway. right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, well, I want to I want to make certain I want to make certain that people are aware of it's uh, it's globalpoultry.org and but also you know if they anybody wants to reach out to you, Mike, because they're uh, much more familiar with you than they are me. Um, you know, if they have questions, if they can't navigate around the the website, or they really want to sponsor a farmer, but we haven't gotten that up yet and but i i would love it as as the lord's moving you and i maybe the lord will move some of our listeners and they'll just beat the door down and say hey i want to help i want to give i want to support i want to sponsor a farmer i want to help get mike badger over to cameroon how do i give and um but the other thing i should mention if people do give specifically uh you know to get the instructors over whether it's yourself or me or or um, or brand brand bullock they can actually donate on the website and just be sure that you put in the little memo, I want this X amount of dollars to go specifically toward the Cameroon trip and I want it to go toward Mike Badger and they can they can put, you know, put your name in there and, and off and off they go. So anyways, this is pretty exciting. I could keep talking, but I'll shut my mouth and <laughs> and uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, once again, thanks, Jim, for uh, for the opportunity. Thanks for coming on to the podcast and um, and talking about Global Poultry Institute and the trip to Cameroon and the work that you're doing and uh, and how how it's going to happen. And uh, we look we look forward to uh, to really an awesome couple of weeks in in Cameroon. And we'll have some I'm sure we'll have some uh, debrief and some reports to to come back out. You know after we. Uh, after we come back yeah, in that'll be 2017. Awesome. So, um, I do appreciate yeah, that'll, it. That'll be fantastic. Yep. <laughs> yep. So we'll, we'll, and we'll just, you know, we'll just use this podcast to, to share what, what's happening there. Thanks Jim. And, uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Great. Thank you, Mike. Bye-bye.
Hey, thanks for listening. If you are feeling called to support this mission in any way, it's globalpoultry.org. And as a producer of this podcast, this would really, really be a personal a personal ask that you would feel blessed enough to hop over to globalpoultry.org, support this mission trip, support me specifically. You know, it would warm my heart to see support from my audience about this trip. And maybe it's not for you and that's okay. Maybe you don't have the means, that's okay. Share this. I can tell you that I'm already committed. So if you feel called to support this, head on over to globalpoultry.org, check it out, and uh, we'll see you next episode.